Join me every month for the inspiration to find your finish line. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Find Your Finish Line, presented by Activice, the official topical pain relief partner of Iron Man, where you can find it on Amazon, at Walmart, and Ironman.com. I'm Mike Riley, everybody, your host. And this podcast is not only about being able to find your finish line at a race or an event, but in life. I talk to people from all walks of life who have overcome many hurdles and jumped over them to get to their finish lines, and hopefully their stories inspire you to do the same. And the guest that we have on today, I'm very excited to have on. I just love her. She is Lauren Parker from Australia. And a lot of you have heard Lauren's story. You know, in 2015 in Kona, she was second in her age group, coming up on stage in the 20, 25 to 29 age group. And then uh, on her way building up to Ironman Australia in Port Macquarie, had a horrific bike accident that left her as where she's at today in that chair. But... She got that Paralympic silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. Hello, Lauren. How are you? Hey, Mike. I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for being on. It's always great to see your smiling face because every time I see you, it seems like you're always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I, try to, I try to always smile anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, good for you. I, I absolutely love that. Well, Lauren, uh, you're out of the uh, Newcastle area of uh, Australia, about two hours north of Sydney. Beautiful beaches, the whole deal. How's, uh, how's everybody doing there? How's the family and everyone? Yeah, the family is great. Um, Newcastle is great. I love uh, my hometown of Newcastle. I actually just become citizen of the year for Newcastle, which is a huge <laughs> yeah. honor. So, uh, yeah, that's um, that was just last week. So. Yeah, very proud of that. But um, yeah, Newcastle is great. Summer is great. Loving it. Yeah, that's right. You're in your summer. Well, I'm in San Diego, so I'm not complaining about the winter here. That's for sure. Uh, but <laughs> you, you, you have great summers there. And I did see that Citizen of the Year in Newcastle. Did they give you like a key to the city? You can go anywhere you want and do whatever you want? <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Um, but yeah, I felt... Um, yeah, I was I was honored on the day when I received the award. So they gave you a medal. Is that like a in Australia? What what's the signification? The OAS. Uh, OAM. Oh, I, I'm not sure. OAM. But OAM. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't have that um, title yet, but uh, yeah, I did get a. Um, I did receive a medal for. Citizen of the Year um, for my hometown, which yeah, yeah, I just love Newcastle and it's I've been I've travelled around you know around the world and I always come back to my hometown of Newcastle feeling like it's yeah I, home and yeah that's really important to me. And I wish I uh, spent time to all the years that I've come to Ironman Australia up in Foster and then Port Macquarie. I'd, you know, fly into Sydney and then drive up past Newcastle to, to get up to the Great Lakes region there. Uh, it is a beautiful area. It, Lauren, were you introduced, how were you introduced to, uh, to Ironman just because of, of uh, Ironman Australia? Well, I started off in triathlon when I was 19. I was doing the ITU circuit. And then I thought I'd give, you know, Ironman 70.3 a go. So I found out, you know, that about Ironman through um, starting triathlon and uh, my first Ironman 70.3 I did at Port Macquarie and that, that was in 2013, pretty sure, and I won my age group and that's where it all started for me. Like I loved the longer distance triathlons uh, and I just loved the endurance and the challenge of it. Uh, and then I did my first full Ironman in 2014 at Port Macquarie again. That was kind of like your coming out, wasn't it, at the longer distance? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the 70.3 in Port Macquarie in 2013 was where I did my first one and I won my age group and that's where I, um, you know, was opened up to this new world of Ironman and uh, I just loved the challenge and the endurance side of the longer distance and, um, yeah, I did my first full Ironman at Port Macquarie in 2014 
uh, and I just absolutely loved it. I loved everything about Iron Man, the um, the atmosphere, the and everyone was there uh, going after their own goals, which I I really loved. And uh, yeah, I actually won my first Iron Man and got my ticket to Kona in 2014, my first one. Yeah, 2015 when you came to Kona. Uh, that was your first time there. Did your did your mom come? Who came with you? Well, 2014 was my first time in Kona and then 2015, my second time. Uh, my mom came to uh, Kona in 2015. Uh, so that was really great for her to see me race and um, great to have her support there as well. That's fantastic. So tell me what it was like coming up on stage, second in your age group in the in the uh, age group when you came up on stage in Kona? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was, I was so happy with my result. Uh, you know, I'd been through a lot over, um, you know, the years. I had eight stress fractures before uh, that race uh, during my time of, as a triathlete. So I never actually was able to put, you know, a race together. And even for 2015 in Kona, uh, I still didn't have a, the perfect preparation for my run, my running. I just kept breaking down, but to actually, you know, be able to get, you know, a result on the board and, you know, that be at Kona and second place podium in my age group. Um, I couldn't have been more happy and proud to stand up, to stand up there on the podium. Yeah, you had a guy. I mean, you went like 10.07. There's nothing wrong with that, that's for sure. That, yeah, especially with not, you know, a full run program, run training program done as well. So um, I was very happy with, with the effort. Yeah, that that's something else. Then you get done with that race and you uh, are, uh, you know, going to turn pro and you have a couple of races at the, at the pro ranks. And now you're training for Ironman Port Macquarie uh, to do that race. And uh, a couple of weeks before the race is when you had the, the accident, the bike accident. Uh, that reverberated around the world when a uh, quote-unquote able body athlete all of a sudden has an accident like that and it severed your spinal cord. Uh, you've, you've talked a lot about that accident. And you've talked a lot about the recovery. But the questions I want to ask are, uh, you're, everything's mental. I mean, it, it's all mental. How were you able to switch that mode of thinking of that inner desire to be that athlete, go through the horrendous accident you went through, the six, eight months of re tough you know, hospital recovery, uh, and switch that mindset, Lauren, to get where you're at today, to, to get that silver medal at the Paralympics? Can you take us through that? Yeah, I mean, my life changed in a split second and I thought my life was over, that um, it wasn't possible for me to get back into sport and especially the sport that I loved and, you know, I'd done sport all my life and all I knew was being an athlete and I thought that was all taken away from me and until I found out that it was possible to get into paratriathlon and back to my sport and, um for the first few months after my accident, it was so hard, obviously mentally, to, you know, realise that I would never walk again. Uh, but having uh, sport to go to fall back on definitely saved my life. It, uh, it, uh, it allowed me to set new goals, which was really important for me. And that's where my mindset sort of changed um, was when I was able to start training again and set new goals and, uh, f you know, have that focus uh, back on my sport. And, uh, yeah, it's about, you know, perspective really for me and um, I really chose to focus on the positives rather than the negatives. Like there was a lot of negatives I could have focused on and, for me to move forward, you know, I, I couldn't dwell on those things. You know, I couldn't change what had happened. Uh, I just needed to focus on, you know, what I could do with my life and how I would move forward. And, you know, I wanted to move forward in, in, in training and in triathlon and see what I could, I could do. And it went really fast. Like I, I got out of 
six months in hospital and got straight back into training straight away and all of a sudden I'm racing around the world uh, in paratriathlon and winning races and, you know, f- four years later competing at the Paralympics representing Australia. You know, I never would have dreamed that when I was laying in the hospital bed and, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was uh, from the outside looking in like a lot of us. And, and uh, it was so fast, Lauren. I, I just remember, what, what do you mean she's racing in a race? Didn't she just have the accident like a few months ago? You know, I mean, that's what it seemed like from the outside. Uh, but I've talked to a lot of people who've had accidents and that that month or two afterwards, they sometimes just don't want to even live. Uh, but you were able to switch it around. Do you think, you think your athlete mindset, which you've 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 had all your life, is something that that you've you just decided I've got to reset it, and this is now what I'm going to do? Definitely. I mean, all I knew was how to be an athlete, and I'd, I'd been an athlete all my life. So I think it was you know it was the easy part. It was getting back into my sport. Um, But, you know, there were those dark days. There were those times where I didn't want to live anymore, even through the last four years. Um, I do have those dark days, but, you know, I get through those. I, um, and that's because of sport and that's um, because of triathlon. You know, you could say that, well, triathlon ruined my life. I could dwell on that or I could see it as it saved my life and that's how I see triathlon is that it you know without triathlon in my life after my accident I I don't know where I'd be to be honest and you know it's the easy part doing sport and doing what I love it's the everyday you know getting through every day with my injury and uh living with pain 24 7 that's the hardest part yeah I uh, obviously have seen some of the, some of your therapy, you know, playing the guitar and are you still playing the guitar? Yeah, of course. I love it. Uh, good. And, and the, the artwork you've done, you know, showing, uh, in a graphic fashion, your, your back pain and your, and the pain on your face of, of going through some of this stuff. And you had a lot of nerve damage and, and nerve pain is, is the worst, uh, so I understand completely on some of the dark days when, when that happens, when you all of a sudden you find yourself waking up and going, you know, this is just not the kind of day I want to have. And, and you're a little down in the dumps. Do you immediately say, I, I've got to go get a workout in, or, or is there a routine or something you do to pull yourself out of it? That's definitely what I do is, uh, get straight into training. And that's, that is like my therapy. I, it's what I love. It takes my mind off uh, the nerve pain that I have and I get to focus on the other pain I put myself through, um, which is the good pain of training. Um, so that definitely helps me start the day when, you know, it's I'm not having a, a good day and, you know, my pain is like is torturous. Like right now I'm in horrific pain, you wouldn't know, but um, because I've got a smile on my face or, most of the time, um, but from my chest to my feet, I'm, I'm being stabbed with needles. It feels like I'm being stabbed with needles everywhere uh, and, like, my whole body feels like it's on fire and that's the whole, the worst thing about my whole injury. You know, I'd rather get rid of the pain than ever to walk again. Like, it's, it's definitely the hardest thing to deal with, but, again, you know, training helps me through that. So when you're racing, Lauren, uh, and having a tough race, and we'll talk about uh, St. George last September, tough day, uh, do those stabbing feelings, do they, do they subside a little bit? Do they go away? Are they still front of mind or are they back of mind? Tell us about that. The pain is still there, but I'm not, you know, focusing on the pain. I'm focusing on, you know, what I'm doing in that moment, which is racing and and being the best I can be in that moment. So I guess the pain, it's still there, but it's not as bad because I'm not focusing on it. I'm being distracted. And, uh, you know, I, that's why I, 
I love what I what I do. I love racing and training because it does take um, my mind off the everyday pain that I'm living with. Um, but definitely, like like when I'm on the starting line of a race, I'm in intense pain already. <laughs> Jeez. That's, you know, I, I don't want to hear any triathletes out there complaining at all anymore. It's, oh, I've got a little sore shoulder or my knee's a little tweaked. And you're sitting in that chair ready to compete with the best in the world and against the best in the world, and you're sitting there in pain. That is just kind of mind-boggling to me. I, I Wow, you're, you're something else. I, the, uh, the comment you made a little while ago, Lauren, about triathlon, you knew, you could say, hey, it ruined your life, but you have that attitude that it saved your life. Then you came out to San Diego, and I forget what year it was, to the Challenge Athletes Foundation race in La Jolla, California. And uh, you saw things that you had never seen before. Tell us about that on some of the young athletes, uh, you know, with the loss of limbs and what they were going through and doing. How did that change your outlook on, on, on your life? Yeah, um, I got a phone call from Bob Babbitt when I was still in rehab and hospital, actually, and he invited me to San Diego to the Challenged Athletes Foundation Triathlon Weekend. Uh, but I was still going to be um, in hospital at the time of the triathlon. So I asked the hospital if I could have five days away to go to San Diego to be part of the event. And they said no. So I signed myself out of hospital straight away and jumped on a plane. And that was the best decision I ever did because it was very negative in there. <laughs> uh, and when I turned up to Challenge Athletes Foundation and met everyone that I met there and saw what I saw, you know, it, it definitely changed my life because. You know, I was in a room with 500 other um, people that had disabilities that were far off, far worse off than me, and they had um, amazing stories that they'd, they've gone through, and uh, they were competing in, or you know, competing in this triathlon this weekend. And I thought, well, if they can do it, then I can do it, and. I also saw that every single person had a smile on their face, even though, you know, they were dealing with what they were dealing with and they had disabilities worse off than me and there were kids running around um, without any arms and legs uh, just with a smile on their face and that's what I saw. I, everyone was so happy and I thought if they can happy can be happy in their situation, then I can be happy. Uh, and that's where it all changed for me. It definitely changed my life um, meeting those people over there. And that's when I, you know, returned back to Australia and started triathlon. That was where I got the inspiration and motivation back again for, for my sport that anything is possible as long as you believe in yourself. That darn, that darn Bob Babbitt, he can change people's lives, can he? That son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. He's a legend. So Paralympics, from that point at CAF and you, you know, saying to yourself, if they can do it, I can do it. And all of a sudden you find yourself in Tokyo on that, uh, Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo on that Australian team and uh, you're competing and you gain the silver medal. But I'll tell you what, Lauren, that was one of the toughest finishes I ever watched because if you don't know this, everybody, Lauren did win the silver, but she lost by like a second. And uh, I know you've said, wow, the silver is fantastic. and But that had to be a little bit gut-wrenching at the time, didn't it? It was so gut-wrenching. Gut and, you know, uh, yeah, it, to be beat by a second and you know, I didn't, things didn't go my way during the race. Um, like 800 meters to go, I was lapping the third place competitor and s slowed me down. And to lose by a second it was definitely gut, gut wrenching. But Kendall, um, who won, is an amazing athlete. And, you know, yeah, she's a great person and we're great friends. And, but yeah, that was a hard day, and but I I really had to think that I've, not many people get a Paralympic Games silver medal, especially four years after an accident. And 
what I'd been through. Yeah. Uh, I was definitely proud as well that day. Uh, I'd been through so much. I'd been through, you know, five spinal cord surgeries, um, lots of other surgeries. Um, during my Paralympic prep, I had, uh, you know, I had a surgery as well. Um, so I had a lot of setbacks that I, I'd had to go through. But, you know, that day at the Paralympics, I was fully prepared. I was on that start line. I couldn't be more fit and I was I was definitely ready to go. So I put everything into the race and, you know, I, I'm, yeah, I'm proud of um, my Paralympic Games silver medal, definitely. What do you what do you think, Lauren? That race and that day has taught you. Uh, to definitely believe in yourself when you when you think you can't do it. Um, you know, I my Paralympic prep was definitely one of the hardest preps I had to go through to be on that start line fully fully prepared. I had the setback with um, a surgery and, you know, I had to work so much harder than what I th- thought I would have to um, in to be prepared in a short amount of time. Um, yeah. So definitely believing in my preparation and, you know, that's the one thing that is really important. You can't succeed if you don't believe in yourself. So. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, what I had to, you know, I was thinking during the during the race, Good you know, you. that I am strong, that I I need to know that I've done I've done all the hard work and this is just like a celebration, you know, getting the race done and yeah. So, if this is kind of Lauren, I don't if, know you, if that explains. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, if you think about it, this is kind of you know the preparation for the Paralympics, you were had some surgeries, and all of a sudden, you're going to race the Ironman 70.3 World Championships in St. George last September. Before that, you go to Las Vegas to do some training uh, in the heat, which it's you know you know what that heat's all about now. And then uh, you get in the car and put your what legs up on the dash or against the window, and you burn your toes, third degree burns. What a few weeks before. St. George, uh, and, and there was a possibility you would, you would lose your toes. So do you just like making it harder on yourself during your training for a big event? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it was a, a week before St. George <laughs> that I burnt my toes. and A week? <laughs> yeah, so I, after I burnt them, you know, they blistered up and I thought, oh, that'll be fine. I'll just put Band-Aids on them. (laughs) And then a couple of days later, they were getting worse. So when we were driving to St. George, we thought we better go to the hospital. And that's when they told me that how severe they were and that, you know, I had a possibility of losing all my toes and that that wasn't good. (laughs) I thought, you know, luckily I went to the hospital and I had amazing support with the healthcare system over there and the doctors and nurses they really cared about my situation and they knew that I wanted to get to the race uh even though I was you know the doctors told me that the best thing was not to race but I'm like no nah, I need to race I, I'm here if there's a way let's find a way and the nurses really helped me um get there um, to to race the Ironman and they actually a couple of the, of the nurses came to the race that day to dress my wounds, my toes during uh, transition, like after the swim and then um, before the run and they were just amazing. It took about 20 minutes to dress my wounds in the race but that's what, what had to be done to um, keep my toes safe but uh, at least I could... Be, be able to get out there on the race course and 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 compete, and it was the hardest day of my life. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, taken care of by, you know, the great healthcare workers from Intermountain Healthcare uh, out of St. George area. Everybody, that that is the the title sponsor of the race, and they're a, they're just a beautiful organization and and beautiful people. Uh, yeah, let's 
Let's talk about that race. We're talking with Lauren Parker, silver medalist, Tokyo Olympics. Uh, she, world champion, 70.3 PC athlete. Lauren, let's talk about St. George. Uh, I, you went through a lot of stuff before that. Obviously, we just talked about with the toes being burnt. But you, you talk about that race like, wow, that was just a tough day. What, what hit you hard about it being tough that maybe you didn't know or you didn't think about? It was the hardest course I've ever done in my life. And I knew it was hard, but, you know, I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Like it took me three hours longer than <laughs> it would normally take me to do a Ironman 70.3 event. And on that bike, you know, as you know, there was four seasons in one day. It started off beautiful and sunny and blue skies and then all of a sudden I'm riding into an electrical storm, thunder, lightning, torrential rain. And, you know, when you're on a hand cycle face up to the sky and you're in torrential rain, it, it's just painful so much on your face and there's nothing you can do about it. And riding through that uh, snow canyon, uh it was just so difficult in those conditions. And then and then after the bike, uh, onto the run leg, after my my feet got uh, changed and the dressings got changed, uh, when it's raining um, in, a, in a racing wheelchair, your gloves slip on the push rim. So it's pretty much impossible to really push or get anywhere in the rain. So I had to wait until the rain subsided a little bit to be able to uh, start the run leg. And then that was brutal, the run. It was like, it felt like it was all uphill the whole time and then like one one kilometre downhill. And I, I thought on that first lap, I'm never going to be able to finish this, you know, that it was going through my head. And <laughs> I'm not going to finish, I, I kept saying. And, um I thought I'd, I ha I had to do this course twice when I was in the first lap. And after that first lap, I thought, yeah, I, I can't continue. I was just totally drained. And then I spoke, spoke to my um, best friend, Brad, who was on the sidelines and he gave me some encouragement. And then I saw the beautiful nurses that were there supporting me on the sidelines as well. And yeah. that definitely gave me that extra uh, motivation to keep going, that extra strength. And then on that second lap, as I'm going up the hill, up the hills, I see my doctor, who was um, the the doctor that was helping me with my toes. He was there running up beside me, running up the hill. And where do you see that where you get your doctor and, and your nurses coming to your event supporting you? So that definitely gave me that extra strength. And coming down that finish line, I was just, I couldn't be more happy that, that I'd actually done it. So um, plus, you know, I had emotionally that day because I'd been through a lot prior to starting the race, um, not just all the physical stuff that I'd been through with my toes. I was dealing with a lot of emotional, personal stuff at that point as well. So when you're in a race like that, that's so physically hard and you're under emotional stress, it makes it even harder. Uh, so for me to finish that day, it was one of the proudest moments and to be greeted at the finish line with my best friend and my nurses, um, it was definitely rewarding, plus the whole Ironman team, the amazing support I had from Ironman was just fantastic. I definitely wouldn't be able to be there competing without their support. Yeah, Ironman did a great job on the video with you, you know, for the 70.3, the World Championships. And I had never heard that story about your doctor being out there. I mean, who who does that? You just don't hear about that. But there's something about... The triathletes and the triathlete community, as you know, Lauren, where people who aren't even triathletes or athletes, like maybe the doctors and nurses, they get enamored with it and they just they just want people to succeed. And I think you 
you saw that, you felt that, and and thank goodness they were there. They helped you get to that finish line, huh? Definitely. And that doctor was the one that advised me not to race, and yet he was still there supporting me, which is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, too bad your hands got to be on your 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 chair when you're running, or you could just be pointing at the doctor. I told you I could do. It. I told you, you know. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is great. Oh wow, what a what a fantastic story! And and Lauren bringing you into that finish line was a pure honor. Uh, you know, just over seven hours you came on through, and now we know that was probably one of the longest seven hours you were ever ever spend in your life, huh? Yeah. Definitely. And the week after I raced Cozumel and I did it in just under five hours. So that's the difference between the two courses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. But I, but I want to get back to St. George 70.3 again and, and race it again. But during the race, I said never again. When I was, when I was, I said, there's no way I can do this again, but I want to get back there. <laughs> Do you uh, do you have a goal to get back there in May for the 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 Ironman World Championships? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we're talking to Ironman. 